for some full court action? You've got it. It's High School Hoops on 7. All season long, it's nothing but net. Hosted by Tony Basilio and sidekick Pino, you've got a front row seat for hoops. It's High School Hoops on 7. WMAK. It's on. High School Hoops on 7 WMAK is presented by Braden's Fine Furniture and Interiors in downtown Knoxville and Braden's Lifestyles at Turkey Creek. Fulton Austin East, need I say more, Tony Basilio, Russell Mays, welcome you to another edition of High School Basketball here on 7 WMAK. And Russell, we're in for a real treat tonight as this one, anytime these two teams get together, the standing room only crowd in here is proof positive that we're gonna see a good one here. Tony, the doors have already been locked. Nobody can get in the gym that's not already here, and it's because Fulton is 14 and 0 on the year, Austin East is 15 and 3. Two of the top teams in District 3 AA and two of the top teams in the KIL. Tony, when Fulton and Austin East gets together, you can always expect a game that's gonna go right down to the wire. You've been around these parts for the better part of two decades you say you've never seen this gym fill up as quickly as it did tonight i have seen the gym doors be locked but never this early about halfway through the girls game they locked the doors and there's probably hundreds of people waiting to get in on the outside that's how much people love this rivalry i knew we were in for an event when i was visiting with jody wright earlier the coach of fulton and he was over there saving seats for his wife and i'm thinking if you had to save seats for the coach's wife you know you're at an event. This game tonight, a match in contrasts. One team's going to want to run ferociously. One team's going to want to pick at spots. Austin East is a team that's going to try to press you from the very start. You've got to be able to handle the basketball against Austin East. You've got to be able to handle the basketball against Fulton also, but Fulton's going to try to make it happen in the half-court game. When you come across half-court, guys like Shannon Hollingsworth is going to be there to make life miserable. The team that plays the best amount of defense, the team that rebounds the best is going to be the team that wins tonight. One of the themes, the Florence kid who is highly decorated from Austin East, and there have been some debate and today uh, earlier. Knoxville News Sentinel ran a story saying he wouldn't be uh, able to go. Talking with the Fulton people, they didn't believe it he's on the books Russell so officially there's an opportunity and a chance that we'll see him tonight do you think we'll see him I think that we'll see him because these Austin East guys know anytime that they get a chance to play Fulton their level of play increases and if you're nursing an injury you want to be out on the floor against Fulton Austin East won two of the three last year in this series Fulton wants to get things back on their side of the ledger as they did last year at home. We'll see if they can. The tip is next on 7 WMAK. We welcome you to Jody Wright Arena. Tony Basilio, Russell Mays. We get ready to go. Action here. High school basketball. This a huge matchup, obviously. They're introducing the Austin East starters. They are Chance Jones, Justin Walker, Travi Pryor, Chase Jones, and Augusta Robinson. And what we don't see is we don't see the young man that we talked about off the top, but we will see him. Well, and Tony, the thing about that is for Austin East, they play a lot of people. We're going to see a lot of substitutes in the basketball game as the night goes along. So I'm sure that we're going to see a, a lot of those guys in the game as, as they'll play 10 or 11 people as the night goes along. The starters for Fulton, Shannon Hollinsworth, Jalen Steele, Will Bryant, James Gallman, who I'm really excited to watch, and Dominique Miner. Excellent backcourt. Well, Gallman is a player that's a sophomore, started as a freshman. He's a good streaky shooter. Miner the same way also is a guy that can shoot it from three ball land. Also, Jalen Steele, a freshman for the Falcons, another guy to watch. You know, it really says something when you're a freshman that starts Steele, a freshman, starts for Fulton. Trave Pryor, freshman, starting in the post for Austin East. You look at the Fulton kids who come in. Excellent record on the year. This Fulton team ready to go. Two teams that have played a lot of great basketball. This a game last year in this gym that was won by Fulton. They played it at their pace, and they were able to win the game. Well, it's going to be a defensive struggle. Hollinsworth controlling the tip. 
up ahead on the drive. Jalen Steele now trapped in the corner. Steele has to get rid of it, and it's stolen away. Anthony Anderson with the steal for the road runners. Anthony Anderson with the steal, laid up ahead, and the ball is good. Chase Jones with the first two in the goal in the ball game. Chase Jones and Chance Jones brothers, they're sophomores, really good players for the road runners, and Fulton gives up two easy points to start the game. Not the way the Falcons want to start things. That's how they want to start things. And it's a great start for Fulton. They've got to get their, their shooters off to a good start shooting the basketball. Ben Zorio, who's helping us a spotter last year, had 55 poured on his Bearden Bruins in middle school ball by Jalen Steele. You know, he was one of the most highly touted freshmen in the area coming into Fulton. The drive knocked away. The rebound put up and in by Trave Pryor. Pryor, a freshman also really highly touted, and that was a second chance opportunity for the Roadrunners. Four to two as Austin, Austin East, East with the lead. Austin East trapping. Out on top. They work it around. Minor. Swing it over into the corner. Steele thought about it. Hollingsworth. Minor. Again, that's Steele. And you see Miner, the spacing, excellent recognition that time, but he can't get the layup to go. And Dominique Miner would love to have that one back. The 6'2 junior just whiffed. Came up a little bit short. That was about the same shot that he hit to win the Super 16 tournament last week against Bearden. So a 4-2 game. Austin East with the lead early and a three ball on the way and off the mark. But the rebound is put up back off the mark as they continue to fight for it. Two tries, three tries, and finally a block. And yeah, Fulton was able to knock it away. Didn't give off Austin East those third and fourth opportunities. And the three. Gallman with the three-pointer in the corner, Tony. Falcons off to a good start shooting it from the field. So Gallman with a three ball. And now it's 5-4. Fulton with the lead. Thought we almost would have had a kick there. Now taking it. Boy, he walked. Are they going to call that? No. So he got away with a few steps there. Dominique yeah. Minor that time, but they're going to call a block. Going to call a block on Austin East, and Charles Mitchell's not too happy with it. And I don't on blame the him. Runner side. Charles Mitchell's fun to watch. One of the most animated head coaches in high school basketball. Foul on Augusta Robinson. That's his first. Dominique Miner off the mark. 5-4, Fulton with a lead, 5.45 to play. First quarter just underway. High school basketball game of the week, 7 WMAK. Miner with his first point of the ball game. Two point lead for Fulton. Augusta Robinson, excellent point guard. This will be a great matchup all night long. Robinson wheels down the boulevard. And Robinson drawing a block. Robinson a good ball handler. Shannon Hollingsworth really just a pest out there on defense. He's going to try to play tight defense, try to knock basketballs loose. That's going to be a fun matchup to watch all night long. Miner with his first foul. And already a substitution for Austin East. And they're going to run at you all night long. Here's Anthony Anderson, who didn't get the start tonight. Has that ball tipped away, and then an excellent job of not only getting in the passing lane by Dominic Miner, but also having the presence of mind to throw it off, and yeah. Austin East player, and the turnover gives it back to Fulton. And just stepped in front of Anderson's inbound pass, knocked it out of bounds off the Austin East player. Fulton up by two here in the first quarter. And here's Hollinsworth against the dribble, against the pressure, rather, leaves it off, and taking it out, James Gallman. Now Dominique Miner. Look at the guys handling the ball, and that's just a turnover. It just, just threw it away. Just an unforced error pass out on the wing, and Jalen Steele couldn't handle it. It goes back to what Coach Wright was telling us beforehand, which is we want to play this game at a high pace, but we don't want to play it too quickly. And that was too quick. And that was too quick. Yeah, that's, a, that's Augusta Robinson wide open to the basket. That's about as an easy two points as you'll see against Fulton. And then a steal. And a three, which won't go. But the bound, the board is put back up and in by Jones, who has four. Easy points for the Roadrunners. Jody Wright wants a timeout. And he takes one. 4.51 to play. First quarter, 8-6. Quick start on 7 WMAK. 4.51 to play. First quarter, 8-6. Fulton down two with the basketball. Four-point run. And then nearly a foul, but they're going to have a block here 
in front court. Got to give the man room to come down. That time, James Gallman with a great catch in traffic. Foul on prior, second team foul on the Roadrunners. And that's Austin East in that press. And, you know, when you turn around, sometimes there's going to be somebody in a red shirt. And that's what happened for the Roadrunners. They're just there to make contact for the foul. That patented 2-1-2 two -two press. And when they start picking it up, it's tough. Fulton with a half-court opportunity right here. Hollinsworth. They get some points. Hollinsworth with the basketball as they work it around. Jalen Steele, the freshman. Doesn't have a freshman body, I'll tell you that. No, Coach Wright's really high on him. Gallman swing it down on the post. Now back on top, it comes to Gallman. Three is good. Two of two from three-point land for James Gallman. And that's a trend they hope will continue tonight. Six in the game for Gallman. And a one-point lead now for the Fulton Falcons at home. Fulton's been making their hay on the outside with the three-pointers. Austin East has been able to score on the inside and in transition. Three ball off the mark. Rebound controlled by Dominic Miner. One and done. They want to control the boards. That's another thing that Fulton wants to do. And that was Florence with the three-pointer for Austin East. As Florence in the game early here, so so much for not playing as we guess yeah, the we top knew, here. We knew he wouldn't be able to miss out. Fulton at the other end. Basketball goes out of bounds, and it'll be Roadrunner ball. And DJ giving you a shot. You can see in the right portion of your screen, look at those folks just piled into the doorway there just to say they were here tonight as Anthony Anderson, the Tennessee commitment in football, brings it up into front court. Nice move on the baseline. Going to get a blocking foul on Jalen Steele, and for the freshman, that's his first. Block it off. Florence made the drive to the basket. Non-shooting foul, so Austin East will work it in. Florence is quite an athlete, isn't he? Looks good out there. Anderson down into the low block. The shot missed by Chase Jones and an excellent rebound by Will Bryant. But Bryant struggling with the handle, has to find somebody to give it to. In the meantime, the clock was ticking anyway. They weren't going to get that ball over. Great job by Anthony Anderson as Hollingsworth got the ball back along the baseline. Anthony held his ground and forced Hollingsworth to step out of bounds. Augusta Robinson and Anderson are just pests out there, aren't they? They are, and, and just about every Austin East player. That's what they're taught to do in that press. You know, a lot of teams, when they practice and get ready for Austin East, they put seven or eight players out on the floor just to simulate their their athletic ability and where they're just everywhere. Shot off the mark, rebound inside, Jones, Jones left hand, can't get it to go. They fight for the board, Austin East comes down with it, and Anthony Anderson with his first two of the ball game. 2.45, clock running, first quarter, 10-9, Austin East. Now a steal, midcourt, Jones with it. Three ball on the way, from the Big right shot. wing is good. Big shot there by Florence. Florence with the three. And that's what Austin East wants to do. They want to get those points off turnovers. Fulton not holding ball on it. Steal, three, off the mark. And they fight for it, and the rebound is taken by James Gallman. Gallman trouble on the handle. They were looking for Bryant cutting to the basket. Austin East got the steal. Just a tough pass. Roadrunners with a four-point lead. Roadrunners on a seven-point run, almost 10. And then a pass out on the wing, thinking about a three ball. Florence now jacks up a two and he's fouled. Well, and you can see just how much Daryl Florence adds to this Austin East team. Just how what his presence means out on the floor. So Florence to the foul line, 13-9 the lead, 158 to play in the quarter. And the Austin East Roadrunners looking to add to it, and you can see why they have the record they have. This is, a, this is a basketball team that's very balanced. Well, and Austin East is trying to shake off a stunning loss on Tuesday night at William Blunt. David Ballman's team did a great job. They're undersized. They play hard. Coach Mitchell said that they gave up a lot of opportunities at the free throw line to win that game, and there's a missed free throw by the Roadrunners there. The junior Florence missing. His second try on the way, and it is good. Four in the game for Florence to lead 14 to nine as they pick up full court. And then throwing it away in front court, James Gallman, as he thought momentarily he had a man open underneath. 
ill-advised pass, and now the turnover is starting to really mount for Fulton. Yeah, Fulton with six turnovers. Austin East has yet to turn the basketball over in this game. That's exactly, Austin East is getting everything that they want from Fulton as far as turnovers go, and that's why Austin East has a five-point lead. Three ball, yes! Make it eight. From the right corner, Daryl Florence. You think he's gonna play tonight? I think so. Shannon Hollinsworth with the ball, splitting a double team. Now gives it off. Pass, bounding off the foot of Dominique Miner, but over to Hollingsworth. Now all kinds of trouble, and it's finally stolen away. And Florence comes away with a steal. Austin East pressure really affecting Fulton. Three ball on the way, right corner, yes! Bang, bang, bang! And Jody Wright wants to talk about it. 105 to play, first quarter. Austin East surging to a 29 lead on seven WMAK. Thanks. 11 points, the deficit for the Fulton Falcons as they come out of the timeout. But Russell, it's gotta be pointed out that Fulton's been a comeback team all year. Fulton was down 19 in the third quarter against Bearden in the Super 16 championship. They won that basketball game. Fulton has really been rattled by the Austin East pressure. If they can start handling it and get it into half court, they're gonna be in good shape. And here are the Falcons with it in front court as checking in for Fulton, 14 Dominique Williams. First time we've seen him tonight. Fulton with basically two point guards in the game now. Perhaps an answer to that pressure that they're seeing, and that's an excellent pass and a conversion for Dominique Miner. Nice one-hand layup. Dominique Miner driving to the basket, answers the Austin East run. Things beginning to slow down a little bit. Now you're getting Austin East in the half court. As that time, a wild shot from 16 won't go. Lincoln Anderson with the shot. That's what you get in the half court defense. Austin East will make some bad decisions. And Fulton now, they play high low, but kicking it out and now setting it up. Williams out on top to Gallman. Williams can't get it to go off the heel of the iron from eight feet inside. Rebound taken down and a long three at the buzzer will not go 20 to 11 as the first quarter comes to a close. And what a great quarter it was for Austin East as they lead on the road, 20 to 11 on 7 WMAK. And there you see the cheerleaders from Austin East. They've had a lot to cheer for thus far. And the guy getting ready to throw the ball in in front of us, Daryl Florence there momentarily, one of the big stories. Now Chance Jones gonna take it. But Florence goes from having been doubtful in the game. The local press said he wasn't going to play today, and he had seven in the first quarter. Tony, I doubt that he was doubtful. I think he was going to play all along. You know, Austin East kind of notorious for they'll say somebody's going to be hurt, and then just like Willis Reed, they'll magically appear. These Austin East guys are not going to miss out on an opportunity to beat Fulton. Second quarter underway. Austin East with the ball and a nine-point lead. Leon Smith now working against the pressure of Hollingsworth. Great rotation down low and fouling him inside, being forced to commit the foul for Fulton, Hans Strickland. The defender came out, they threw it over the top to Pryor and Hans Strickland had to come down and commit the foul. That'll be his first and Austin East with a chance here at the free throw line to make it a double digit lead again. But Tony, this is a game of runs, a Fulton Austin East game. One team will go on a run then the other one will creep back into it. So really no lead safe in a game like this. Pryor makes his first. He has three. The lead now an even 10. But seven to zero, the turnover margin. Fulton was seven turnovers, Austin East was zero. And that's a big reason why it's a 10 point lead here for the road runner. Jalen Steele checks in for Dominique Williams at the 750 mark. In the second quarter. And the lead is stays as he misses the foul shot at 10, 21 to 11. And now Fulton picking it up in the front court, getting it up ahead and converting Bryant. Good job by Will Bryant. Got down on the block, pass from Hollingsworth. Bryant with a head fake, got to the basket as, as they got around Pryor, who was late to the basket. Shannon Hollingsworth with, a, with an excellent dish that time. And now Austin East with the ball. And these two teams playing at a frenetic pace, wasting no time. There will be no working, walking the ball up the floor. And that time, a great block out of bounds cleanly by Shannon Hollinsworth as he stripped, but ran out of real estate, Daryl Florence. Yeah, Florence was going up for a three, and Shannon just knocked it out of there. Jones, Florence, 
Florence on the baseline is undercut, and they're going to get a foul on Shannon Hollinsworth. Yeah, Shannon was just not able to get out of the way. I think he got his feet tied up. Uh, they're going to call him for a block. And for Hollinsworth, that's his first and the team's fourth. Actually, it's the team's fifth. Jones, trouble against Hollinsworth. Jones pulls up from 16 left side, no. Tough shot right and there. And the rebound, it took a funny bounce and it allows Austin East to come out of there with it, but unable to do anything with the ball. Travi Pryor as he ran out of room. Well, and that's what we talked about a little bit earlier. You get Austin East in the half court offensive game, they're gonna fire up some wild shots every now and then, but Fulton has gotta be able to not let Austin East have offensive rebounds. First turnover for Austin East in the game versus seven for Fulton, and Fulton's fortunate to only be down eight at this point at 21-13. Great look inside. Will Bryant from six, can't get it to go. Boy, he'd love to have that back. Yeah, tough break right there on the jumper on the baseline by Will Bryant. Prior Austin long on the pass, run. stolen away. Hans Strickland with the steal. Strickland leaving it in the hands of Hollinsworth. Hollinsworth down the boulevard to Bryant. Bryant with the kiss, yes! Bryant well coached. The head fake got the Austin East defender in the air and he was able to make his move to the basket for the easy layup. So Bryant with two in the game and it's 21 to 15 now, 6.15 to play, first half. And we talked about runs, Fulton creeping back in. Three it. ball, no, won't go. And the rebound taken by Fulton. And Hans Strickland, who's made his presence felt, now they turn it over. But Hans Strickland playing center field gets it back. And Steele tips the ball. Steele now with the ball in front court. Steele with the ball down the lane, pulls up for eight. Yes! That's a freshman, Jalen Steele bringing the ball down the floor, finding the open area for the jumper. Jalen Steele sweet as sugar. 21-17 the score. Four-point advantage here for Austin East. They led by 11 just a few minutes ago. Jones leaves it off. Three ball, no. Flat by Florence. And the rebound fought for. Pryor almost had it, but controlling is Shannon Hollingsworth. Looks like Austin East is settling for that three-pointer. They want to get that quick shot, and that time Florence was off the mark. Hollingsworth with the ball. Four-point lead, front court. As they go high, low, now kick it out. Left side, three, yes! Yeah. As Vic Smith, who just checked in with the three ball, and Vic Smith with three biggins, and just like that, it's 21-20. And was Russell May shooting you straight, or was he shooting you straight? A 9-0 run now. Back and forth, here's Austin East to the basket. Defense went to sleep just a little bit for Fulton. And Jody Wright over there, you see him really animated. Jody Wright didn't like that call at all. Coach Wright cannot handle defensive breakdowns. He puts such pride in his defense. He doesn't want to see that happen. Some fresh bodies, three on each side in for each team. Steele with a second foul. Did he come out? No, he did not, but he picks up a second. Bryant out of the game. James Gallman back in. Gallman, excellent entry pass. The follow won't go. Offensive rebound. And now a great offensive rebound and put back for Chase Jones, who has six. They give a lot of credit to Justin Walker right there for keeping that ball alive. Son of former ball, Rob Jones, one half of the Jones Twins. Very and talented here, basketball working team. Working against the pressure, three ball on the way from 19, won't go. Big offensive rebound by Strickland. There's Steele, yes. A floater by Jalen Steele in the lane. A running one-hander, Jalen Steele, and it is, just like that, a 23-22 lead for Austin East who's back on offense, setting it up, Augusta Robinson. Now to Chase Jones from 20, straight away, Jones cycles down low. Jones has trouble with it, Jones intercepted. Coming out of there, Dominique Williams. Williams to the lane, unmolested, yeah, he won't, can't get it to go. Nice move. And now back the other way, wide open for the jam. Showtime. Flushing it down, Walker with the flush and then we get some extracurricular. And did you see what happened at the back of that? I didn't, of course. These fans live we to see- We had a fan run out onto the court from Austin East after the jam. Well, these fans live to see dunks and that's what Austin East gave them right there and they got a little bit over exuberant. You gotta be careful because it might cost your team somewhere down the road if they decide to call a technical foul. 25 to 22. A dunk is just worth two points. Dominique Minor breaks the pressure, gets it up. The shot won't go for Hans Strickland. And rebound out of bounds is last touch by Fulton. And so Fulton going to turn the ball over. And you know, 
they need to slow it down a little bit on the offensive end. They're playing too fast. They are, and, and just being patient, getting in the half-court offense is what paid off for Fulton when they made the run. Now, Austin East has a three-point lead in the basketball. Let's see what they can do. They're going to try to get increase this lead again. And Anderson back in at point. Anderson leaving for Augusta Robinson. Now they go to the weak side, and a great pass to Chase Jones, who has eight, and Chase Jones' looks have all been great ones. They have been, and you can't get a much better look than that, cutting wide open to the basket for a layup. Up ahead they go, and this game is work at a fever pace. As they break the pressure, now handling it, Dominique Miner. Miner, left wing, three ball on the way, won't go. Rebound fought for and taken by Anderson, and Anderson throws it off. 34, James Gallman, and it goes to Austin East, who with a five-point lead, they weathered the storm there momentarily. 2.53 to play in the first half, 27-22 the score, and the refs are letting these two teams play tonight. No question about it. Not many fouls called in the first half, not as many as you'd think. Who does that, that favor that, here? That's a big-time advantage to Austin East. Anthony Anderson with the ball, front court. You say a favor, Austin East, they turn it over. Because It'll I be Fulton ball when we come back on 7 WMAK. 2.23 to go. Chase Jones committing a foul. Chase Jones with his first, the team's third. And Dominique Miner to play it in. 27-22, Fulton with a five-point deficit and a three on the way will not go. And that's not the shot they yeah, wanted, not is Not the it? shot, just a quick shot, maybe trying to catch Austin East a little bit of sleep. Fulton needs a good offensive possession right here. Roadrunners, four consecutive points to retake the, the control of the game. Miner's 18-footer won't go, and the rebound belongs to Austin East. And here's Anthony Anderson in control. Anderson skips it out into the left wing. And now they run a little inside out and a great cut and a foul on Dominique Miner. Great job that time of cutting and recognition by Chase Jones, who's had a great game early on here. He really, really active. And, and he's just a sophomore for Austin East, a guy that was a member of the team last year. And what do you think about those socks right there? He's still in the Christmas spirit. I don't know if you can see those on TV. He's got his Christmas tree socks on, so I think Santa Claus brought him a present. It still is the Christmas season. I mean, the schools are still on Christmas break, so why not? Hey, whatever works, and it's worked well for him. Maybe good luck charm. We might see those in March. He keeps <laughs> playing like this. I just hope he washes them. I won't have to worry about it. <laughs> So nine in the game for Jones. He missed the second foul shot, and the rebound is controlled by Fulton. And they just rip it away. And Gallman has it just ripped out of his arms, as you said, but a foul committed. You cannot be the least bit lackadaisical trying to get a hold of rebounds against Austin East because there's going to be hands and arms flying in there trying to knock the basketball away. You know, there's no easy rebounds. There's no easy steals against Austin East. Justin Walker on the foul, his first, team's fourth. Austin East makes you work for everything. Hollinsworth trying to get it up over the pressure. Double teamed in backcourt, almost a walk. And now they get it up ahead. And here controlling, Hans Strickland. Strickland splitting a double team. Strickland down the lane, yes, he lays it in. Good ball control by Hans driving to the basket and Fulton cuts the Austin East lead to four, 28-24. Two in the game for Strickland, 28-24. And Strickland with a steal on the other end. And now back the other end they go. James Gallman, one on two, yes! Spins it in, a miraculous layup for James Gallman, who somehow spun it between two men. And the English was kind. And now he goes to the line and has a chance to cut this to a one point and that game. That was Anthony Anderson that he spun around, a UT football commitment, one of the best athletes in the area. What a great move. And that's what James Gallman's becoming known for, those great drives to the basket. So 28-26 the lead. And the try is good. Well, Austin East made a run. They got the lead up to five. Fulton's cut back into it. It's a one-point advantage for the Roadrunners here with just about a minute left in the first half. And Gallman now has 12 points in the, in the ball game. He's been big for the Falcons. Six-footer won't go. Left side on the baseline and Fulton controlling. Anderson drove it in there as deep as he could and just had to fire up a wild shot. And a foul on the floor, 49 seconds to go. Fulton to the foul line with a chance to take the lead when we continue on 7 WMAK. 
46 seconds to go. Fulton actually erroneously, I said when we went to the break, they had a chance to take the lead. I thought they were on the line. B.O., they'll be in the bonus on the next foul. There we go. East. 38 seconds to play in the half. And we've seen such frantic basketball. Fulton's going to try to hold for the last shot here with 30 seconds left in the half. But Austin East not going to let them do it easily. Shannon Hollingsworth. Handling it out top, playing catch with Gallman. Hollingsworth now eludes one man, now another, goes down the lane on the crossover, got away with a hop, skip, and a jump, but turns the ball over. I thought he got away with a little bit of a jump inside yeah, that anyway. Was, that was a nice move, and Jody Wright not happy with the call from the official underneath. He thought it went out on Austin East, but with the uh, calm nature that the official made that call, he really sold it. Anthony Anderson now with it, 16 seconds to play as he gets it over midcourt. 12 seconds, 10 seconds, three ball on the way. They don't even hold for the final shot. They want to score. It's a run out and laying it and getting it blocked. Wow. Unbelievable rejection by Chase Jones. It was a mile high. Well, the thing to remember, it's a block. The crowd gets excited, but Fulton still controls the basketball and will have the last shot. And three seconds to play. Vic Smith, three ball, who just got blocked. That's off the top of the, uh, of the iron. And the follow won't go as almost laying it in, Will Bryant, who had a nice little shot put try from six feet. But what a first half we saw. That was a great half well, of basketball. It was everything that was advertised. We had runs on both ends. Austin East led by 11 points at one, at one point. Fulton cut it to one. Austin East got the lead up to five. Fulton's got it back one again as uh, the Roadrunners have a one-point lead in the halftime. So really, in the first half, we haven't settled anything. And you saw the Roadrunners going to the half. Fulton's cheerleaders down in front of us. We'll take a brief timeout. We'll come back. We'll look at their halftime routine as we continue. Halftime, 28-27. Austin East with the lead on 7 WMAK. Five. 28-27s welcome you back. Halftime here on 7 WMAK. Hope you all are ready for some steps as we get ready to roll with the step team from Fulton High School, the Fulton High School step team, as they entertain us at the half on 7 WMAK.
And there you have it, a little bit of the sights and sounds here at Fulton High School. The step team getting it done. And Russell Mays at halftime. A game of runs. Oh, truly it has, Tony. Austin East had an 11-point lead at one point. Fulton's got back into it. Both of these teams shooting 11 of 24 from the field for 46%. Fulton's made one more three-pointer than Austin East so far in the game. Fulton one of three from the free throw line. Austin East three of six. Really almost even in rebounds. Austin East 12, Fulton 11. Really the big stat of the first half. Fulton seven turnovers, Austin East with three. So it's a one point game. Both teams will make adjustments at halftime and get ready for what's gonna be just a wild and woolly second half. There is no doubt this is gonna be a great basketball game. You can see it coming. Hey, I'm, I mean, we're in for a great second half. It is, and it's everything that's been advertised. You know, when Fulton and Austin East gets together, especially in the games that are played at Fulton, you know that it's gonna be a crazy game. DJ, if we can get a shot of this, we have an interview loper on the floor DJ we've got some guests dancers. it is absolutely pandemonium is broken out here on 7 WMAK <laughs> where's Mario Lopez when you need him as we come back they're all in the spirit <laughs> I'll tell you what, after watching that, DJ, I'm gonna go get me about three slices of pepperoni because we just burned some serious calories just watching that as we continue on 7 WMAK. Second half action on the way next. We welcome you back on 7 WMAK. Second half action. Austin East with the basketball trailing, or rather Fulton with the basketball trailing by one. Falcons with the ball in front court. 28 27. A score right around where Jody Wright wanted it. Yeah, it, it, a relatively low scoring game. That's what Fulton wants. They don't want it to be a, a game where there's a lot of running up and down the floor where Austin East can dictate it and get a lot of easy baskets. That's where Austin East does most of their scoring is on easy baskets. And now they're being deliberate in the half court and why not? And a foul committed as coming over the top, Augusta Robinson fouling Dominique Minor, first foul on Austin East. And trying to lull Austin East to sleep Why a little not? bit with a lot of perimeter passing. Inbounds pass comes to Miner, and Miner just jumps up there and tips it in for the Falcons, and Fulton gets their first lead since early in the first quarter, 29-28. And there you have it. And just like that, an answer the other way, 17 won't go off the right side on the baseline. And now Gorman with it, front court. They swing it around the perimeter. Hollinsworth. Hollinsworth leaving on top, minor. Hollinsworth again. Jody Wright deciding to get deliberate here. Jalen Steele, high low, beautiful action that time. As they use him at the top, high point, and the conversion for Bryant. And Bryant was six in the game. Well, and Fulton has settled down in their half court offense and have been able to get two consecutive baskets to open up. And a rejection at the other end from Dominic Miner, who just packed Augusta Robinson. Now Shannon Hollinsworth controlling the ball in front court. And Austin East choosing not to press, so the game has settled down here a little bit, taking an odd turn in the early third quarter. Oh, no question about it. Quick jumper here by Steele. And it won't go. And the rebound tipped out of bounds and belongs to Austin East. Hey. Daryl Florence inbounding to Augusta Robinson, who will be met at midcourt by Shannon Hollinsworth. Robinson leaving for Daryl Florence. Uh, all right, let's just try it again right here, see if this works, okay? Uh, Here's Justin Walker. Walker has it stolen away. Dominique Miner, oh, gets rejected by Walker, wow! His hand looked like it was up in the cylinder, though. And that's what... Uh, that was definite basket interference. His Jody, hand's up in the cylinder. That's what Jody Wright and Mitch Mitchell are trying to argue for on the Fulton bench, that it might have been a, a goaltend, and I think he wants an explanation. But it's a, it's a block. It does wipe a sure two points off the board for Fulton, but Fulton still controls the basketball. And give a lot of credit for that young man. Oh, three ball on the way, Shannon Hollinsworth. As he nails the three, his first three of the game. Three points in the game. And now, just like that, Fulton coming out of the locker room, outscoring this team 
six to nothing. And, and Austin East looks like they're disheveled right now. Well, and, and Fulton is doing everything that they want to do so far uh, in this game. They've been able to settle down. They've been able to get some good shots against Austin East, and that's why they've been able to take the lead. But this is a game of runs. Joe McNish tells me we're in a 7-0 run. My correction. And just wait here in just any second. Austin East is going to go on a run. The crowd's going to get in their favor, and they'll be right back in it. So they're on a 7-0 run, and the ball's tipped away and taken by James Gallman, who leaves for Hollinsworth. And Hollinsworth is going to pull it out and slow it down. Trying to lull Austin East. Austin East played at such a, a high level in the first half, so emotional. You wonder maybe if they're somewhat drained a little bit, and Fulton's going to try to catch them flat-footed. And they're trapping out of their zone now as they go 2-3. And he splits the trap, and a foul on the floor committed by Anderson. And that's the foul, Tony, that sometimes goes unnoticed uh, when they're calling things not very close, but that time they did call the trip. Fulton up by six. Three fouls now on Anthony Anderson. Dominic Miner set to play it in. Falcons with a six-point lead in the ball. Inside five minutes to play third quarter. High school basketball, seven WMAK. Shannon Hollinsworth swings it around. Jalen Steele. Three ball. Won't go. Gallman. Anderson with the board. Gallman had a good look at it. That would have been huge for the Falcons. Let's see if Austin East can get things on track offensively. Anderson down the lane. Can't get it to go. I mean, they let him go, basically, and Dominic Miner with the board. Yeah, that was a gimme two points there that Austin East left on the floor. Shannon Hollinsworth. Miner thought about it. Hollinsworth. Corner. Steal. No. And the rebound for Anthony Anderson. And the Roadrunners are running. What else is new? And it's good. As the layup by Chase Jones. And Jones scoring in bunches, 13 in the game. Austin East gets those points off a of transition, exactly what they wanted. Lead is four for Fulton right here. And once Don again, going to try to get into the half court. Shannon Hollinsworth, they milk that four-point lead. Clock now inside, 345 to play. And they tell us outside the magnitude of this game. <clears throat> there are about 600 people right now outside milling around who, who missed that air ball from Shannon Hollinsworth. Well, and Shannon hit one right there to open up the second half. You know, he's a pretty decent shooter, but he's probably not the guy that you want to have shooting uh, a three-pointer, especially when you've got Austin East flat-footed. And now Anthony Anderson almost has it taken away by Hollinsworth. Anderson down the lane, leads it off, and it's stolen away by Bryant. And here's Steele back the other way, and Steele has it kicked, and it goes off the leg of Anderson out of bounds. We're going to be Fulton basketball, and we come back, 314 to play, third quarter, 34-30, the homestanding Falcons on 7 WMAK. Dangerous inbound pass. We welcome you back. Bryant on the baseline. Bryant pumps. Bryant walks. Yeah, underneath the basket, Austin East that time held their ground. Jody Wright's wanting a foul. Complete reversal, Russell, of halves. Austin East four turnovers in the first half. Fulton is yet to turn it over in this half. And that's why Fulton has a four-point lead right now. So A.E. with four turnovers in this quarter after committing only one turnover in the first half. Remarkable turnaround. Here's Florence with the basketball. He was a Florence big key. Florence a long one. three. Wow! Way downtown with a hand on his face. That's a good sign for Austin East if they can get Florence with some confidence shooting from the field. Ten in the game for Florence and a steal. And Florence, a la Vinnie Johnson back in the day. Man. That's some serious instant offense. Here's Steele the other way. Steele says, I'll match you. Maybe I won't, as it won't go. And Austin East on a 5-0 run. They've Look been at taking the lead. All that work to get the lead. And just like, oh, what a rejection. What a block from Dominique Miner. And back the other way, James Gallman down the boulevard. Yes, and it goes, and he's, and he's fouled. Another great move by James Gallman. He made one in the first half. But how about Austin East? It looked like they were dead in the water for a little while. And Florence with a long three-pointer, a contested three-pointer, and then the steal and the score. Austin East took the lead up. Fulton so takes it right back. A 7-0 lead, 7-0 uh, run is followed up by an 8-0 run, and now Fulton on a 3-0 run. Well, Gallman made the free throw, so Fulton back up by two, 
with 2.15 remaining in the third quarter. Boy, this is the folks that did were able to pay $5 to get in are getting their money's worth. And we're doing something pretty cool, Russell, is where we've got this game tonight, not only on 7 WMAK, but it's being simulcast on your school radio station. 91.1 WKCS as Austin East gets an easy basket from Chase Jones. We're tied back up. So a tie game at 37 apiece. And here's Hollinsworth with it in front court. Bryant on the baseline, yes. Excellent job. Will Bryant really plays within himself, and he has eight. And that's the thing. Will knows what he's able to do, and that was a good job. He could have driven the basketball all the way to the basket, and if he had, they would have knocked it up into the third row. One, so he pulled up and shot it in. 1.30, and the clock is ticking in the third quarter. 39-37, Fulton clinging to a two-point lead. Spinning, driving. The turnaround six-footer won't go. Bryant has the ball tipped away from him, and the rebound's put back up and in as great job that time by Chase Jones, who has great hands. That young man right there is quite a player, and the foul committed by Dominique Miner, and for Miner, that's number three on him, so the foul starting to mount. In fact, foul trouble in the game. Just to look-see at that, Anthony Anderson has three, Miner has two, Steele has two, Hollinsworth has two, Augusta Robinson, two, four, and that just goes to show you Austin East. Fulton was, was in position to get that rebound. Austin East came out of nowhere, knocked the ball loose, and got an easy layup in the foul. The free throw's no good. We're Jones can't convert up ahead to Bryant, and Bryant lays it in. And Will's been a big factor here for the Falcons in the third quarter. Will Bryant now with 10 in the game. 41-39, one minute to go as we're inside a minute now. Tony, one key as the game goes along. There hasn't been a whole lot. And the ball is stripped. Hasn't been a whole lot of substitutions in this Two quarter. Two on one, Hollinsworth, yes! James Gallman. Unbelievable. Hollingsworth falling down, makes the pass. Gallman lays it in. Falcons back up by four. And now we'll see a sub some substitutions for Charles Mitchell to try to give his guys a little extra breather going into the quarter, 46 seconds left. The pace, the score, everything right now is favoring Fulton. As James Gallman looks to give his bunch a five-point lead, and he does. But Fulton's doing some of the things that Austin East usually does, getting points out of transition. And James Gallman now with 14 in the game. And Anthony Anderson leaves it off on the left wing. The three ball on the air, it's no good. It's tipped around and controlling is Fulton. And you better be careful. Shannon Hollinsworth almost had it taken away from him. And now it is taken away. And Anderson leaves it underneath. And the bucket is converted by Chance Jones. Classic, his first two. Classic Austin East basketball right there. Forcing the turnover, getting the basket. Falcons up by three and a steal. And a kick ball in front court on Anthony Anderson. 12.6 seconds to play. In the third quarter, 44-41, Fulton with the lead, inbounding, side out. And Daryl Florence had his hands up there just a minute ago, like, what's up with calling that a kickball? That should have been an easy steal and layup for the Roadrunners. Hey, when you're used to getting them, why not? All right, Fulton would like to hold for a last shot here. Ten seconds left in the quarter, up by three. And here's Hollinsworth. Hollinsworth, what a look down low. Bryant turns around, yes, as he bleeds it in at the buzzer. Matt Bryant, or Will Bryant rather, 12 points. He has been heroic in this one, and a five-point lead for the Fulton Falcons as we head to the fourth quarter. What a ball game on 7 to And we welcome you back, Tony Basilio, along with uh, the great Russell Mays. Here on 7 WMAK, tonight's action presented by our friends at Braden, Rusty Wallace Honda, Rusty Wallace Kia, CND Tire, Hosefeld Chiropractic, Albus Furniture, Outfitters, Smoothie King, and ETS Communications. About ready for the second half, Tony. Uh, in the third quarter, Austin E. Six turnovers, Fulton three. That's almost opposite to what happened in the first half. Fulton had seven off turnovers compared to Austin East three. And who's going to get the tempo? That's going to decide who's going to win the game. The, the tempo war here as Anderson leads it off. That's the way they want to play. Trevay Pryor now with five in the game. Great dish and from Anthony Anderson. And we haven't seen Pryor much in the second half. 
Shannon Hollinsworth down the left side, pulls up from 14, yeah! Well, if he can make those shots, Fulton's gonna be in good shape. From the elbow, Falcons back up by five. And Hollinsworth with five in the game. Anthony Anderson now. Anthony Anderson shuffles down the lane, off the glass, won't go, rebound try, won't go. And Jones, yeah, and he's fouled! Second and third opportunities by the Roadrunners. Good Absolute. job by Anderson Absolute. getting it on the inside. Roadrunners kept the ball alive, gave them a chance to get the score. It's Justin Walker, I thought it was two, it's 22. And second foul on Will Bryant. And the more offensive rebounds that Austin East gets, the greater possibility that they're going to get an easy put back and a foul. As the shot falls off, Strickland almost walked. And Strickland did almost travel. And now with the ball in front court, James Gallman. Gallman now handling out top, going to leave for the point guard. Shannon Hollinsworth, a junior, 5'6", has played well. Tony, it's obvious to me right now, watching Austin East on defense there, look like there's a whole lot more pep in their step yes, than there, there was is. in the third quarter. They, they had, know that it's time to play. They had no energy coming out in that third quarter. There's a look down low. Bryant with a great save, but then knocks it off one of his teammates, Hans Strickland, and somehow they retain possession. Yeah, Explain that to uh, me. Somebody from Austin East was down there, or either Will did a good job of selling that it... That was a real sales job. A, that there was a red shirt down there. Somebody has a future in the... Uh, in the fine art. Shannon Hollinsworth the inbound. From under his basket, kicked by Anthony Anderson, 6.57 to play. In this one, 48-45, Fulton with a three-point lead in the ball. Tony, if you think the crowd's wild in the first half, it, it's as this game goes along, it's gonna be crazy as Austin East gets a steal on the inbound. Treve Pryor coming up with it. Here's Anderson down the lane, off the glass, hangs in the air, can't get it to go. Pryor with a tip, no, yes, on the follow. Two opportunities for Pryor on the putback. He's just a freshman, got the easy basket. Six points for him in the game. So Pryor with six, a kick ball, Fulton ball, and we continue on seven WMAK. Dominique Miner to play it in, gets it into Hollinsworth. A one-point lead for the Fulton Falcons as we're inside six and a half to play in the basketball game. And it swung onto the, onto the right side and knocked out of bounds off Strickland. And that's just a loss of concentration. Yeah, Hans got the basketball down deep in the corner and just stepped out of bounds with it. In all fairness to him, though, there are hundreds of people along the baseline. It's, it's insane in here. Man, it's just going to get crazier. Austin East here, Tony with a chance to take the lead. And the 15-footer will not go for Anderson. It's tipped around. Pryor is able to knock it off a Fulton player. Offense. And so Austin East retains possession, down one, 48-47, 6-14 to play in the game. And Tony, the key to me in this fourth quarter is Austin East has had a whole host of second chance opportunities and offensive rebounds. Now Hans Strickland gets a blow, also out of the game, Gallman in, Will Bryant, and also Jalen Steele. And Steele is going to pick up Daryl Florence at the top of the perimeter. This is about Florence's range. Florence thinking about it. Florence now wheels on Bryant. Florence picks up his dribble. Augusta Robinson now to Florence. And Florence with a three, it will not go. The rebound fought for, tipped out of bounds. I'll tell you, Trevay Pryor, that freshman gets his hands on a lot of balls. He's making a difference on the inside for Austin East. And here running out, uncontested, but missing the layup is Jalen Steele. You won't see that at all. Well, and Austin East got down the floor and I think they slapped the backboard, which helped that ball spit out. And Fulton was really contesting for a goal 10 call. Austin East quickly down to the floor and Fulton fouls. Falcon still up by one, but Austin East gonna have a chance to take the lead. A costly turn of events as Dominique Miner now picks up his fourth foul. And we've got to tell everybody for full disclosure, Russell would be doing this game on the radio right now if he wasn't helping us on 7 WMAK. And Russell, you're saving my hide tonight. But my friend, come on, that's a little home cooking there in your call. <laughs> as, the, as the foul shot missed. And so it stays never, a one point game. Tony, you're never supposed to slap the backboard, ever. Never, ever. Never, ever. But I might have some maroon colored glasses on, not really. Oh, I don't know, I say live a little. <laughs> as Robinson second tried, off the mark. He misses two, and Bryant gets it out, and they get it over midcourt. They better be careful. Boy, that was almost a backcourt. Collinsworth trapped right in front of us. Steele thought about the three. Falcons with two turnovers in this quarter already. Steele 
leaves it on top, 15 footer straight away off the heel of the iron. Now the guys are tightening up, you can see it. Yeah, that's one Fulton has to get to go down. Good offensive rebound. Austin East had a lot of opportunities to take the lead. Here's another chance. Augusta Robinson leaving for Leon Smith, who's back in the game. Leon Smith almost traveled with it. His first action in a while. That ball got kicked away. It was kicked away and no call. Good for you for seeing that. Gallman, Gallman cycling down. Gallman kicks to the wing. Straight ahead, what a look inside. As putting it up, oh, having it blocked, but getting it back and having it blocked and unable to make it go. Just a wild scrum underneath and here comes Austin East with it. Austin East going the lane, that's good. And he's fouled. Augusta Robinson, a high flyer that time. And Jody Wright's just waved the white towel at the officials. I think he felt like there was a lot of extracurricular activity down at the other end of the floor. The same thing down on the other end and Austin East got the call. So Austin East takes the lead and they have a chance to make it a two point lead, but you're right. These officials are letting them play. And, and to some extent, and to some extent, you would think it's to Fulton's advantage, but not with the athleticism that, that Austin East has. No, and Austin East misses the free throw. If, they, if Austin East ball. is unable to get out of here with a win, they're going to look back at their trips here from the foul line. They have not taken advantage of from the line tonight at all. What are their numbers from the foul line, if we can get those? All right, Fulton with the basketball. They need to get it in, down by one. And they do get it in. And James Gallman fouled in front court. And now a Bronx Shear over there. Look at Jody. A Bronx Shear. <laughs> hey, you're a Jody Wright, you're a Jody Wright court here, I'm here to tell you. Austin East tonight, three of nine from the foul line. Boy, he had two officials' ears at once. Sorry about that. Jody Wright is working hard. Charles sure Mitchell is. wants a time. He can't Charles Mitchell can't get anybody to pay attention to him. <laughs> Charles Mitchell takes time out, we'll take it with him. Austin East with a 49-48 lead as we continue on 7 WMAK. Those lovely young ladies want something to cheer about here. As they've seen Austin East go on one of those patented runs. Right now, a one-point lead for the Roadrunners. 49-48, 4-29. And I'll tell you, the officials are really, uh, the, uh, the, the folks, the home folks are really getting on the officials on the far side. Yeah, they are, and I think there was just a little hold by Austin East, fourth against Robinson. Augusta Robinson now with four fouls. A couple of key players, Anderson and Robinson, a couple of key backcourt guys with four fouls. Look at that mugging over there, and no, no call. James wow. Gallman leaving it off underneath. Will Bryant's been huge. Reverse layup by Bryant. Fulton retakes the lead, 50 to 49. 14 in the game, a 50-49 lead for Fulton. 14 for Will Bryant. Augusta Robinson. Check, now goes right by, blows by him on the baseline, a foul, and it will not go, but I'll tell you, what speed that time by Augusta Robinson just blowing by Hollinsworth and creating and leaving for Justin Walker, who will go to the line and shoot two. It was almost like Austin East was just trying to char recharge those batteries in the third quarter. Okay, how did they not call that a two-shot foul? I think it must have been before the shot. They held they held him as he was driving to the basket before the shot. So That's they entertaining. Didn't the, they, That's didn't, enter they didn't get the That's continuation. That's entertaining, Russell. I'll give you that. <laughs> they didn't get the continue. Charles Mitchell was wanting the foul. Well, now we got a buzzer. Let's see. They're going to talk about it here. And I bet you here. This might be a situation. See, I think the officials called the foul on somebody that wasn't out on the floor. Jalen Steele picking up his third, the team's sixth, though. So next foul by both teams will result in shooting fouls. Four ties, four lead changes in this game. A chance for another one with this possession for the Roadrunners. Robinson leaving for Anderson. Anderson out top, down low. Great position by Hart. Throwing a wide open layup. Uncontested Chase Jones has been huge all night. All right, Fulton's got to get the basketball down the floor with the, against the Austin East And here's Robinson do. spinning, 15-footer, no! What a pretty try, though. The putback, no good. Bryant with it, and Bryant pushed by Chase Jones, the sophomore. Bryant has been amazing. And Fulton has got some offensive rebounds there. 
Now, Tony, I've, I've watched these games for a long time, and I have always said what they ought to do is, before they bring people out, is just run about 20 wind sprints and then just play overtime because we might be setting ourselves up for another Fulton Austin East overtime classic. As Bryant misses. Boy, I, I, I hope so, but I hope not. This is exhausting me. Big miss there by Fulton. Augusta Robinson with Hollinsworth on the floor, blows to the baseline, leaves it off, and Jones converts. They drove it, and right underneath the basket was Jones. They got it to him. He was able to spin around the Fulton defense and lay it in. Jones was 17, 51-50. Austin East climbs back, eighth lead change of the night. Out on top, Hans Strickland. Now they cycle it down to Bryant, and Bryant trouble on the handle, but will retain possession. 252 remaining. Minor. It's with an incredible ball back in. Incredible ball game. Minor in with four. And also on the floor playing with four is Anthony Anderson. Tony, I don't think we lied to the folks at home when we said this one was going to be an exciting basketball game. It's an incredible game. James Gallman and Steele playing catch out top. Gallman with it. 20 feet away. Now Steele. Steele thought about a three. Leaves for Gallman. Three ball is good. Shannon Hollingsworth. And Hollingsworth's not usually Fulton's three-point sharpshooter, but he's had a couple big ones in this game. 2-2 two, two in the game and two threes and eight points. And now he traps out front. 53-51 Fulton. Anthony Anderson nice down the move. lane shooting for the tie. Yes. Anthony Anderson wanted that one. That was senior leadership. Timeout on the floor. 2-11 to play in the game. 53 all on 7 WMAK. Hard to get a better one than this one. 2-11 to play. 53 all. Fulton with the ball. And Austin East going to pick it up with some token full court pressure. Well, and it's a good idea by Charles Mitchell to kind of get, get in the defense they want on this inbounds pass and try to force a quick turnover. And that's what they do. James Gallman able to get the ball in the midcourt. Not turnover, but full court pressure. As that time, just going in and firing it up, Hollinsworth. And Hollinsworth looked a little uncomfortable. They looked like his knee buckled. Well, during the timeout, he came over to the bench, and trainer Justin Creasy and assistant coach Mitch Mitchell stretched him out uh, as he was having some cramps. First foul on Smith. Uh, it's hot in here in this gym. This is a game that's being played at a very high pace. I'm, I'm not surprised to see some I'm cramping. surprised we haven't seen more of it, to be honest with you. As the first foul shot goes, in, out, and in. And Fulton retakes the lead at 54-53. 2.02 to play in the game, 54-53. The Falcons with the lead. And it looks like Fulton's going to send Dominique Williams into the game if Hollingsworth makes this free throw to give Shannon a little bit of a break. Hollingsworth, second try, good. And here comes Dominique Will Williams spelling Hollingsworth. So he'll leave with 10 points, but none bigger than those last two. And that's going to be key for Austin East. That's Fulton's best defender out of the game. Hollingsworth can really force some turnovers. 55, so 53 as we come to the two, two minute mark. And here's Anderson splitting two defenders. Anderson forces it and gets it. How about Anthony Anderson? Two big baskets in a row and was fouled by Steele. And Austin East ties it back up. Anthony Anderson is a fine player. Four fouls now on Steele. As we look at the foul trouble, Steele with four. Also with four fouls. Minor. Three on Hollinsworth. Four on Robinson. Missed it and he misses the foul shot to put him ahead, so he stays tied. Well, and those fouls are going to become huge if we go into an overtime period. 55 apiece. Out on top. Here's Dominique Williams with it. Williams leaves for Minor. Now Minor turns. It will not go from 15. Right, big possession here, Tony, with a minute 24 remaining in the basketball game. 55-55. Austin East needs to run their offense and get a good shot, and then that changes everything I'm, if Austin East takes the lead here. I'm not so sure I don't run something for, for Anderson here. No, he tries to pass it, and it's stolen away. Great tip by Steele. 
Oh, actually, same. Dominique Williams. Great play, Dominique Williams. And Jody Wright wants a timeout. Good decision here by Fulton to get in the offense that they want to right here. And Austin East can get now get into the defense that they want. One oh two possession here. One oh two to play in the game. We're deadlocked at fifty five. A thrilling finish on the way on seven WMAK. One, and there you see. The wife of Coach Wright, and I'll tell you, wives live it, don't they? Living and dying here with a minute left. One minute to go in the game, deadlock at 55. They pick it up, full court, and Fulton able to navigate it. Shannon Hollinsworth with it. In front court, as we're gonna run, as you said earlier, run some clock here. Now Austin, they trap. Austin East is not gonna let them do it. They're gonna try to force an easy turnover and try to get an easy transition basket. James Gallman, you can see the sweat protruding from him in high definition. Gallman cycles it. A little eight footer on a baseline will not go a good for Jalen Steele. Hey, excellent look. Now Austin East with an opportunity. 26 seconds as they come over the timeline. And they take timeout. Great decision. 20 seconds to play in the game. And everybody's on their feet. Tonight's action presented by our friends at Braden's Lifestyles. Rusty Wallace Honda. Central Avenue Pike at Callahan Drive. Rusty Wallace Kia. C&D Tire. Five area locations serving you better. Hosenfeld Chiropractic. Your family commitment to health. Hands-on health care, Smoothie King, five area locations coming soon to North Knoxville. ETS Communications, 877-TRI-HDTV, and Office Furniture Outfitters. Tony, the one thing that the timeout does here is increase the opportunity for a steal on the inbounds pass. Anybody that's watched Tennessee basketball, that's what they do so well in a situation like this. And you know that a Jody Wright coach team is going to have something to try to puzzle the Roadrunners. But Austin East has a timeout. If they get in trouble, that they can use it right here. So, you know, really, Austin East holds all the cards right here. They have the basketball and they control the situation. If Fulton fouls Austin East, the Roadrunners go to the line for one and one. So really, you know, if you're picking the team that's gonna win the game right here, you'd have to favor Austin East. But still, 20 seconds left, that means the Roadrunners would have to really run some time off to get that last shot. 20 seconds to go in the game. Deadlocked at 55. Walker plays it in, plays it into Anderson. Anderson's been huge with the ball in his hand. He's had the hot hand. They just run it to Anderson. I believe that's what I would do as they're inside 12 seconds. Now the clock inside 10. Anderson goes. Anderson to the hoop. Anderson can't get it to go. The putback is no, and they call a jump ball. The possession arrow is going to favor Fulton. Great effort by Fulton that they were able to force the jump ball. Austin East had a great opportunity underneath for a putback. Fulton got a hand in there on it. All right, four seconds left. This is going to be extremely hard for Fulton. The thing that you don't want here is a turnover to give Austin East a shot. And I think Fulton's gonna play for overtime. That's a trouble on the handle, a three ball on the way, and no! And what did I tell you about five minutes ago? Overtime, 55-55. So they put an extra four minutes on the clock. Free basketball when we continue on 7 WMA. There he is over there stretching. Yeah. Everybody's stretching as we look forward to overtime. Well, and, and really, I think the overtime period, Austin East is going to have an advantage here because they don't have as many people with four fouls. Fulton's got a couple of guys with four fouls. Shooting almost even. Austin East 23 of 43 from the field. Fulton 22 of 45. Each team would have given anything to get their last shot to go down. One of the officials here just came over to us and just said, guys, this is too good of a game for anybody to lose. You know, foul issues are going to become a, a, a problem now, as they always are in overtime. And the one has to wonder, if you run out of players, does Mr. Basketball, who's prominent in these parts, <laughs> make, him, make it an appearance? I think Mr. Basketball, his car is still out in the parking lot. Though. Shannon, and in case you're wondering who Mr. Basketball is, you just have to see him. But for the moment, it's James Gallman who lays it in. First point in overtime is key. And what'd you think of the Mr. Mr. Basketball reference? Classic. Thank you. Classic. 16 points for Gallman on the game. So Gallman was 16. Wow. And a, wow. 
but failing to convert. What a great spin by Justin Walker. Great huh? move by Walker and just couldn't finish right here. Big possession for both sides. Austin East seeing Fulton drive the lane in a travel force, and that's just excellent defense by Chase Jones. And the folks at home can look at this crowd. I mean, most of the people here are on their feet. This is high school basketball at its very best. It is smoking hot. There's no place in the country I'd rather be tonight than here. What a great atmosphere. Two great communities, great schools, excellent people, and a three ball is missed. That was Florence. Dominique Miner. Florence started the game hitting that. And it, what a little floater. Great shot. And he's cramping up. You can see it at home. Yeah. Shannon Hollingsworth playing through the cramps. Shannon Hollingsworth showing a lot of courage. Look at him putting hands on both his hands on his hips. And now coming up with it. And there's a foul on Anderson. And, and Anderson commits his fourth. And that's a good thing that he did. Charles Mitchell will be glad that, of that foul because Fulton was getting ready to get rid of the basketball for an easy layup down the floor. Not to give Fulton a six point lead. That's a good foul in that situation. Not to confuse the viewers at home. I said he had four in the second half, but I erroneously spoke. So I'll fall on my sword to tell you that Anderson now has four fouls. Well, and Fulton's going to have two free throws here from Gallman and Shannon playing through the cramping. Jalen Steele's been cramping, but Hollingsworth's going to stay in the game. Missed the free throw. Gallman misses the foul shot and able to corral the rebound. Chase Jones, he lost it momentarily, but got it. That leaves and the door open for the pass road ahead. As Daryl Florence driving the lane and, yo, yeah, oh, can't get it to go. Well, that's two good opportunities Austin East has had. They've missed. Here's the run out and the foul. And Anthony Anderson's gone. And that's going to mean a lot. I tell you, Anthony has been the spark for Austin East in this second half. He's the guy that when Fulton looked like they were about ready to pull away, he brought them back into it. You know, Anthony Anderson is a kid. I know Austin East is going to miss at their school next year. Not only a great athlete, going to be playing at football at UT, he's a great student and a great young man too. And you watch the way he played tonight, and you can tell this rivalry means a lot to him. It does, no question about it. And that's 10 team fouls, so Fulton will get two free throws. Vic Smith to the line. Yes. Credit Vic Smith. 60-55. Just like that, a five-point game. Which means very little in Fulton Austin East. A 5-0 run to start overtime. Smith gets the kiss. Vic Smith going to come out of the game. Eight big points for Vic Smith. 61-55, 2.24 to play in the game. Austin East down six with the ball. Florence working off a screen, three, no. And a great job of letting the ball go out of bounds by Jalen Steele, and who shielding. showed wisdom beyond his years there. And Jody Wright said it's so odd about Jalen Steele that maybe he might be a little ahead defensively instead of offensively. A run out, two on one, and just drawing the contact. 34, James Gallman, and it's all Fulton in overtime. And you never would have thought this. No, 207 remaining in the game. There's still a lot of time left for Austin East to go on a run, but Fulton has kind of caught Austin East flat-footed again, just like they were in the third quarter. Two big free throws here from Pryor Gallman. committing a second foul, and that one's good from James Gallman. And the Fulton students have almost made it out onto the floor just to the right of the camera. Look at this. And there, look at there. Uh, and that shot is good. So he makes two. 63-55, this is a big possession for the Roadrunners. They've got to have a basket. Eight point game, Augusta Robinson with it. There's no Anthony Anderson on the floor, and quite frankly, you can see it, but that was a great possession. And they got an easy as basket Chase right there, as Fulton did not want to give up the foul right there. And Charles Mitchell wants a timeout to set up his strategy for the last minute 55 of this basketball game. Falcons Jones, up six. Jones now with 19 in the game. Six point lead, 155 to play in overtime, 63-57 on seven WMA. 155 to play in the game. 63-57. And here's Hollinsworth. They throw over the, bre the press. And Hollinsworth, what a smart play. He's going to control the ball. He had numbers. Ooh. I'm not sure if that was a smart play. Three ball. No. I'm really not sure if that was a smart play. 
But it's a six-point lead and 140 to go. And here's Smith filling the, lead, the lane at the other end. Easy. Actually, Chase Jones. Easy basket for the Roadrunners. They've 21. got the lead to four. Now back the other way. Boy, he's fortunate, Jalen Steele is, because he slipped there on that, uh, on that um, attempt. And Jalen's been another player for Fulton that's been cramping up. I don't know that I've ever seen the level of that. And Isaiah Ray, former player for the Falcons, he's going to come out right on the, the middle. Court. You're right in the middle. Move. He's going to come out on the floor and do a little coaching. I don't guess we're supposed to do that. Jalen Steele. Can't get it to go. Who was that? Isaiah Ray was a point guard for the Falcons a couple years ago. And Isaiah, that just goes to show you how much it means to the former players and the former students. Isaiah wanted rivalry. some face time, didn't he? Yeah. Jalen Steele, second try. Yes. Five-point game. Austin East with a run to get back into it. 129 to go. And back the other way they come. Setting it up in front court. Prior basketball going away. By Gallman. James Gallman. Mr. Basketball. No. And here they come. The Roadrunners. The 16-footer won't go, and it's tipped out, and a great job controlling. Up ahead, a breakout. Will Bryant lays it in. 16 points and a six-point lead. 66 to 59. Seven-point lead. Three-point Three ball, no. Rebound, Jones, yes. Yeah, and Fulton gave that one up easily, not wanting to commit the foul. And I don't think Coach Wright will be real happy that the Falcons didn't box out. Five-point lead for Fulton, 46 seconds left. Basically, the key down the stretch here for Fulton is they've got, to, shots. they've got to control the basketball. They can't turn over, and they've got to hit their free throws. And this is been quite a game. Chase Jones, the leading scorer in the game for Austin East with 21 points, and I know they'll want to get the ball in his hands down the stretch. Uh, I would say Florence, we might see him try to get a shot because he got on a roll shooting the three-pointers. But Austin East right now probably going to go for broke trying to get a steal on this inbounds pass and try to get a cheap basket. A five-point lead, a steal makes it a one-point game if they can get the basket. So this game, Austin East still very much in it. 66-51. 45 seconds to play, or 46 seconds rather, to play in the game. In 2004, we played the district tournament here. Fulton and Austin East played a three overtime game. Would you wow. like three? Would you like three overtimes tonight, Tony? Uh, absolutely not. <laughs> Since my blood sugar dropped about 15 minutes ago, in case you're interested. I think at this pace too. This is amazing, isn't it? Thank goodness we're close to St. Mary's because there's going to be some people needing some treatment after this game tonight. I'm telling you, Dominique Miner gets it in. Foul committed by and Shannon Hollinsworth will go to the line. Yeah, quick hold there by Austin East on the inbounds. Augusta Robinson on the foul. That's his fifth, and that's gone. That's it for him. You know, you almost, if you're them and you draw that up in the huddle, you almost say anybody foul but Robinson, don't you? You would think, but maybe you know the way that. Hollingsworth popped open. He was about the only one that could do that. Uh, I mean, it's easy got, to be critical. Obviously, it's yeah. it's very quick, right? We've got we've got we've got people everywhere. Some of the Austin East fans are heading for the exits. I wouldn't do that yet because there's still 45 seconds left in this one. Shannon Hollingsworth, first try won't go. And that's you know Shannon's been cramping. His legs are not there. That one was short. And I think maybe just the simple fact that his legs have about given out had a lot to do with that missed free throw. Both of these teams have played extremely hard. No one deserves to lose. Hollinsworth with 13 in the game. Makes it still a two possession game, but a six point advantage for Fulton. 67 to 61, six point basketball game. Roadrunners need something quick here. They need a three ball in a big time way. Leon Smith thought about it, now cycles it down low. Turnaround won't go and Committing a foul inside. Let's see who they're going to call. I believe it was Bryant. Yes. Will Bryant. And that's exactly what Austin East wants. They want to go to the free throw line because that means, of course, that they can score with the clock stop. And here's Jones, Chase Jones at the line. 21 points on the game so far. And that try won't go. And we get, it's a two-shot yeah, foul. Is. Ten team fouls, two-shot foul. Boy, big miss for the Roadrunners. Now, maybe the best thing for them would be to miss and get an offensive rebound. 
Chase Jones does just that, and they can't do that, but they're going to try to get a steal, but in ripping it out of there, a foul committed. And remember, Fulton is undefeated, 14-0 on the year, trying to keep that streak alive. Two years ago, they started out the season 18-0 before they went to Austin East and lost their first game of the season. Jonathan Hale committing the foul. The junior just checked in. Fulton to be 14-0 is, is quite a remarkable accomplishment when you look at their schedule. Well, no, they have, they've had to play Bearden twice in the that's, last that's, couple of weeks. It's amazing. Farragut twice, Morristown West. Some good AAA teams down the stretch here. Yes. And Dominic Miner misses. And Fulton's been less than stellar at the free throw line down the stretch. This game could have, long, it away. could have long since been over. Conversely, Austin East, they'd have hit their foul shots, would have won the game in regulation. Well, that makes it a three possession game, seven points. 68, 61, 27 seconds to go. Pushing it, Leon Smith in the corner, three won't go. Soft off the front of the iron and the rebound taken and controlled by Dominique Miner. Down low, the little layup is put in by Jalen Steele. And just looks like Austin East kind of knowing what's getting ready yeah. to happen. Still a lot of basketball left, six seconds left. Both teams have kind of come to a stop. Hey, who can blame them? It's a thousand degrees in here and that'll do it. And there you see the jubilation as it's gonna end at 70 to 63. They're gonna count that final bucket. And look at the jubilation here as some students storm out onto the floor. And it is a true show of excitement here. It, as Fulton victorious tonight over Austin East and the record Russell improves. 15 and 0 for the Falcons. The 15 and 0. An impressive win, a hard fought win. Anytime you beat Austin East, you've really accomplished something. And now Austin East is going to turn their focus on uh, when they get to play Fulton here in a couple of weeks, a game that was rescheduled uh, because Fulton was playing in the state championship game. Fulton has not won at Austin East since 1995. So Austin wow. East has to feel good about their chances. Big district win for Fulton because they stay undefeated in the district. One game ahead of Austin East and uh, getting seating for the district tournament is going to be so important. Russell, I really want to thank you for, for joining us uh, tomorrow on 7 WMAK, a girls high school basketball action, uh, the Fulton Lady Falcons and the Lady Roadrunners from Austin East. Ought to be a good one. Hope you'll join us tomorrow at one o'clock. We'll have that one for you. Russell, in the meantime, I want to thank you for taking uh, taking time out. We did a simulcast on, on the uh, school radio station here tonight. Piped our audio and I hope we didn't torment and torture them too much. Well, but think, uh, it was great having you. I think all those 600 people out in the parking lot heard an exciting game, so they got to be a part of it too, Tony. Thank you so much. This has been a blast. Hopefully we can do it again sometime. Well, you're a great man, and I appreciate everything you do for this community. You, in your own way, are Mr. Basketball. Well, thank you. Uh, maybe I'll get a car that, and put a sign on it that says that. Sounds like an idea. In the meantime, we want to crown our player of the game tonight, presented by our friends at Rusty Wallace Honda. And tonight, who do you want to give it to? We've I've got a couple worthy candidates here. We have, we have several worthy candidates. I'll tell you who I'd like. I'll tell you who I think deserves it. I think Shannon Hollinsworth controlled the tempo of that game down the stretch. And we saw him time and time again over there stretching. Now, box score wise, he didn't have the most impressive night. Uh, Bryant had a great night. Jones had a great night on the Austin East uh, side of things. Um, Gallman ha had a great game as well. What do you think? Well, I can't disagree with you with Hollingsworth playing through all of those cramps in the second half. And the point guard is so key against a team yeah. like Austin East. Shannon did a great job. But you also, you want to credit you know, Gallman with some big baskets yeah. down, the, down the stretch. Yeah. The, the, what Will Bryant played into this basketball game in the third quarter helping Fulton come back in. But I think Shannon Hollingsworth's a worthy winner. And congratulations to Shannon Hollinsworth uh, tonight, our player of the game presented by our friends at Rusty Wallace Honda. We do want to thank all our sponsors uh, who uh, brought this action to you tonight. Uh, our friends at uh, ETS Communications, 877-TRI-HDTV, Smoothie King, five area locations serving you better. Office Furniture Outfitters uh, at uh, down off uh, uh, 17th Avenue at, or 17th at Forest. Uh, and uh, our friends at the Hosefeld Chiropractic, your home of 
hands-on health care, C&D tire, five area locations, Rusty Wallace Kia, Rusty Wallace Honda on the corner of Central Avenue, Pike Callahan Drive, and Braden's Turkey Creek, and also down in the downtown area. Russell, it's been a real pleasure, man. Thank you, Tony, and if every game that you guys do the rest of the way are as exciting as this one, the folks at home are in for a real treat this year. If every game is exciting as this one, I'm going to eat me a full course, four course meal before <laughs> I come out here. But uh, in the meantime, I still have to get me a couple slices of uh, pepperoni pizza after seeing the step team at halftime. So, because I'll tell you, they put on a show here at Fulton from start to finish and great folks. DJ Corcoran, thank you for your work. Uh, Tiger Williams and everybody back at 7 WMAK, thank you for your commitment to high school sports. I want to thank Joe McNish and Ben Zorio for helping us out here. And until Joe we meet found again, his jacket. did Joe find his jacket? He found his jacket. Joe thought his jacket was gone. Until, thank you. I'm glad to see you. <laughs> I thought I was going out of pocket there on Joe's jacket. But until we meet again, hope you have a great week. We'll see you tomorrow on 7 WMAK. Can't get enough high school hoops? Watch the girls game Sunday afternoon at 2 p.m. right here on 7 WMAK. East Tennessee's leader in local high definition sports production. High school hoops on 7 WMAK is presented by Braden's Fine Furniture and Interiors in downtown Knoxville and Braden's Lifestyles at Turkey Creek.